Hi, welcome back to Game Theory series. In this specific session, I am going to walk you through with mixed strategy related problems. When the players do not have any specific strategy to be followed in, and they take multiple strategies into course of action, then we would call that as a mixed strategy. How would you identify the given problem as a mixed strategy? First, we will go ahead and find out the row minima and the column maxima. If there is no saddle point, then clearly it indicates that we need to use a mixed strategy. Now let's look at a specific problem. There are two food manufacturers called as ABC and XYZ. They are competing for an increased market share. They are competing for an increased market share. Their payoff matrix is shown in the following table, which describes the increase in the market share for ABC and decrease in the market share of XYZ. The payoff matrix is given over here, where we have gotten the company ABC and another company XYZ, where we could call this as a player two and ABC is a player one. ABC is at a better position where you could see that any strategy that they are going to employ in, it is going to increase their market share. But whereas any strategy that player is going to do in response or independent of a ABC company, it is going to decrease their market share. Now they need to identify for ABC, which is the best strategy that they must do in, in all those four, given XYZ also is going to implement four strategies over here. And we are asked to find out what is the optimal strategy for both the manufacturers, both the manufacturer, it's ABC and XYZ. And then we have to find the value of them. the sum is so simple. First, let me show you how to calculate it. First level, what we have to do is we have to go ahead and find out what is our row minima and then what is our column maxima. But please be assured wherever you happen to see minus two sign, it is advantageous to player two, which is for the XYZ, it is advantageous and it is a disadvantageous to ABC company. If it is denoted in positive term, it is advantage to the player one. And if it is denoted in a negative term, it is advantage to the player two. We are trying to find out for the company ABC, when they give coupons, what is the minimum gain that they can get? If you are going to choose a minus two, this is more specific to the player two, so which we are not going to take in. So minimum gain in this case is going to be a one. Decrease coupon, what is the minimum, minimum one? Let's move on to the third one, maintaining the present strategy. Minimum gain is zero. XYZ company is going to give coupons and we are maintaining a present strategy. We would lose 3% of the market share to XYZ company. So that is not the case. If we adapt increasing advertising, so from this we could see the minimum strategy that we are going to gain is one. Over. So the row minimum we have taken. For player one, this is the minimum gain that they are going to get. Now let's find out for the player XYZ, which is the player two, what is the maximum loss? Which strategy will give them the maximum loss over here? First level, if when they have decided to give coupons, find out what is the maximum over here, it is going to be six. Look at decreasing the price. What is the maximum loss to? 2% 2 of the market share, they will be losing it. Look at maintaining present strategy. In this, the maximum loss is going to be 12%. If they maintain the present strategy, they would lose 12%. And look at the last strategy. If they increase the advertising, the maximum loss is going to be six over here. So for one player, it is a gain. And for the other player, it is a loss. Now, what we have to do is, from the minimum gain, this is a row minima. From the minimum gain, find out what is the maximum of the minimum value. Here, from the minimum value, what is the maximum over here? The maximum is 1 over here. Similarly, from the column, what is the value that we have taken maximum? From the maximum, find out what is the minimum loss. So the minimum loss stands at the point 2 over here. The maximum loss is 2 over here. And the minimax gain is going to be 1. 
where we could clearly see that the minimax value is 1 and maximum value is 2. Minimax is not equal to maximum value. So which means clearly there is no saddle point. If you want to understand the saddle point, saddle point in simple term is the equilibrium. Now, when equilibrium, what happens is, now let's say, this is a saddle. Both the scenario, the value must be the same. It could be any value. It could be 8, it could be 10. It needs to be the same value. So this is when we are going to use a mixed strategy. First, go ahead and do a row total. 2 minus 2 gets called off. 4 plus 1, it's 5 over here. Move on to the second row for decreasing the price. 6 plus 1, 7. 7 plus 12, 19. 19 plus 3, 22. For the third row, 6 plus 0, 6. 6 plus 2, 8. 8 minus 3, it's 5. For the last row, 2 minus 3, minus 1. Minus 1 and 7, 6. 6 plus 1, 7 over here. 2 plus 6, 8. 8 minus 3, 5, 5 plus 2, 7. Now let's do it for the second strategy decreasing the price. Minus 2 plus 1, minus 1, minus 1 plus 2, 1, 1 minus 3, minus 2. Maintaining the present strategy, let's find out 4 plus 12, 16, 16 plus 0, 16, 16 plus 7, 23. For the fourth strategy, increasing at the DSA, 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 6, 10, 10 plus 1, 11. So we have got it. This is the total. From the value that is given, identify which is the maximum value. 22 is the maximum value. This is called as a, this is a dominating value or a dominating strategy because this is the highest. Out of all the strategy that we have gotten, decreasing the price is giving us the maximum yield over here. But we need to, find out this strategy is superior to which other strategy. We have to take out the weaker strategy. This is the strongest strategy. We need to figure out what is the weaker strategy. You have gotten the least value at 5. But at this particular position, we have gotten two places. One, giving coupon also, it's 5. And maintaining present strategy is also 5. So we need to find out which strategy is inferior to the dominating strategy. Decreasing price is a SAT strategy. Out of these two, give coupons and then maintaining the present strategy, which is a dominated strategy or an inferior strategy. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the dominating strategy and the dominated strategy and check for, is it dominated? Is giving coupons is an inferior strategy? Coupons. And the second one is decreasing the price. Write the value of all that 2, minus 2, 4, and 1, 6, 1, 12, and 3. Now, which is a dominating strategy? This is a dominating strategy. So I'm going to check in. Is 6 greater than 2? The answer is yes. Is 1 greater than minus 2? Yes. Is 12 greater than 4? Yes. Is 3 greater than 1? The answer is yes. Which means Decreasing price is the dominating strategy and the coupons have gotten less value. When compared to decreasing price, giving coupons is not the best strategy. So we are going to remove that strategy from this place. So this strategy is not working. We have deleted. Between maintaining strategy and increasing advertising, which is an inferior strategy. Here clearly we could see that the lesser value stands at the number 5. So we are going to again check for the dominance property over here. Maintaining present strategy and then decreasing price. Write down the values of these two sets, which is a dominating strategy. Decreasing price is a dominating strategy. So I'm going to compare. Is 6 greater than minus 3? The answer is yes. Is 1 greater than 2? No. Is 12 greater than 0? Yes. Is 3 greater than 6? The answer is no. Which means clearly we could see that decreasing the price is not dominating maintaining the present strategy because you have gotten two no. In a dominance property, you will have all answer as y, y, y. 
if you only few values are dominated and the other ones are not dominated then this is not called as a dominating strategy so which means decreasing price is not dominating maintaining the present strategy we have learned decreasing price strategy and maintaining price strategy is not going to be influenced by each other then what is remaining we are going to check in for the next one just write down the values of both is 6 greater than 2 yes is 1 greater than minus 3 yes is 12 greater than 7 yes is 3 greater than 1 the answer is yes wherever you happen to see all yes then you can see this particular strategy is inferior to the previous strategy so in this case decreasing the price is a superior strategy when compared to increasing the advertisement so we would tell it increasing advertising strategy we are left with decreasing price strategy and maintaining price strategy now that we have finished in identifying what strategy abc must be doing we are yet to find out what strategy xyz company must take it. the next step is to do a column reduction we have gotten four different strategy at the specific point but we are not sure whether giving coupons would yield a result or decreasing price or maintaining the price strategy or finally increasing the advertising but we cannot tend to have all these strategies because all the strategy would not yield us the required result so we need to reduce it so to do this first do a column total 6 plus 3 since minus sign is over here 6 minus 3 that is going to be 3 over here 2 plus 1 it's 3 12 plus 0 it's 12 increasing advertising we have gotten 900 now look at it what happens is when abc is decreasing the price and if xyz maintains the same strategy they would lose 12% of the market share which means this is a costlier penalty they cannot afford to have it abc is decreasing the price and xyz has decided to give coupons abc will gain 6% of the market share but xyz will lose 6% of the market share because they are decreasing the price on the other hand instead of decreasing the price if abc maintains the same present strategy and xyz give the coupons xyz will gain plus 3 percentage of the share and uh, maintaining present strategy for abc it will yield minus 3 percent which means they will lose 3 percent of the share why within a payoff matrix whenever you happen to see a negative sign player 2 is at advantageous position and player 1 is at a disadvantageous position minus value is always for the player 2 and plus values are for the player 1 so in this particular scenario player 2 or the xyz company needs to minimize their losses identify what is the maximum value this is the maximum value and what is the minimum loss over here minimum loss is 3 but which 3 whatever the value that comes first take this value and check it out now let's say in terms of decreasing the price and in terms of maintaining the present strategy present strategy the values are 6 minus 3 12 and 0 is 12 greater than 6 the answer is yes is 0 greater than minus 3 yes which means this specific strategy is the one which has got in a costly affair so we have to delete the strategy so this strategy is out even if we go for advertising this also will result in 9% of the market share we will lose 9% when compared to the other in the next we are going to consider increasing the advertisement and then we want to find out whether this can dominate the coupons which means can is it going to incur the maximum loss and here the same present strategy and ms so what do we do we would take 3 and 6 and compare it with 6 and minus 3 over here now what we have to do is increasing advertisement is greater than giving coupons the answer is no is maintaining the present strategy is greater than giving coupons the answer is yes so this is not dominator the next option is to compare increasing advertisement with the decreasing price strategy so what do we do we would take 
decreasing the price, maintaining the present strategy for ABC company and for XYZ company, increasing advertisement cost and then decreasing the price. Is 3 greater than 1? Yes. Is 6 greater than 2? Yes. So which strategy is dominating clearly? Increasing advertisement will lead us more loss. So as a result of that, we are going to get rid of advertising month also. Since this is a mixed strategy, still we have not come to the answer. Now we have to solve this 2 by 2 payoff matrix. Now we have to solve this using Oddman methods, which is easy. Though you have got lots of formula, but this is a simple. Now what do we do? We are going to create Oddman's. For our Oddman's, it's simple. Do 6 minus 1. How much is 6 minus 1? 5. Write it in the row below. Minus 3, minus 2, minus 3, minus 2 will give you minus 5. You can just ignore the sign. Similarly, 6 minus minus 3, 6 minus of minus 3 will give you 9. Just write it over here. 1 minus 2 will give you 1 over here. Write it. So once you have done this, 5 plus 5 is 10. 1 plus 9 is also 10. What do you do to understand the probability of this? First take the value 5 and take the sum of the value 5 by 10, which is equal to 1 by 2. 5 by 10, which is equal to 1 by 2, which means 50% of the time, decreasing price strategy must be used and another 50% of the time, they should maintain the present strategy. For giving coupons, if they give coupons, 1 by 10. 1 by 10 times they have to give coupons and 9 by 10, they have to decrease the price so as to maximize the loss. Now, what happens is ultimately when you sum up, the probability is always 1. Therefore, the optimal strategy for player A, we are given with four strategy. First strategy we have eliminated zero. We are not going to use that strategy. Second strategy we are going to use it, decreasing the price one by two, 50% of the time we will use it. The third strategy, maintaining present strategy one by two times. And the fourth strategy we are not using it, so, which is company ABC. Then we have gotten player B, which is XYZ. For XYZ, look at first strategy, 1 by 10, we would be using it, which is over here. And second strategy, 9 by 10. And the third strategy, we are not using it. Fourth strategy, we are not using it. This is the optimal strategy. So out of these two strategies, which is available for company ABC, Half of the time you would use decreasing the price and half of the time maintaining the present strategy. For player B, 10% of the time they should give coupons and 90% of the time they should decrease the prices. This is the optimal strategy. Now we have to calculate the value of the game. For calculating the value of the game, there are four different methods. I'm going to take the simplest one, irrespective of whichever the method that you are using, you must have the same answer. Take this value. So what do we have? 6. 6 into 1 by 2. Plus. Here it is minus 3. Minus 3 into 1 by 2. Which will give us 6 by 2. Plus into minus. Which is minus 3 by 2. Which will give us a value of 3 by 2. Now. Take this pair of value and then multiply it with the probability. Now take this portion of the value. 6 into 1 by 10, 1 into 9 by 10. 1 by 10 plus 1 into 9 by 10, which is going to give us 6 by 10 plus 9 by 10, which in turn 15 by 10 which will give us 3 by 2. Multiply the last pair of matrix with this value. You can go ahead in taking one of the value and checking it. But in order to show you, 
if your calculations are right with the probability and given the payoff matrix, whichever the way that you're going to take him, your answers are going to be the right. In your examination, you don't have to do all these four steps unless and until they have asked for you, unless and until they ask you, what is the gain for the company ABC? Three by two is the gain for ABC and XYZ, the losses three by two for the company XYZ. That's all you have solved it. Yes, I can hear that. That's so easy to solve it. I'm sure you are able to follow me. Should you have any doubts, please post it in the comment box. I'm happy to answer it. Thank you so much for joining me. See you all in another video. This is Katpakam signing off. Good day.